What is going on wonderful people, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, welcome back to my biostatistics playlist. In previous videos we talked about the measures of central tendency, such as the mean, the median and the mode. We discussed the measures of dispersion, such as the range, the interquartile range, the standard deviation, and the z-score or the z-score. We covered sensitivity versus specificity, positive predictive value versus negative predictive value, positive likelihood ratio versus negative likelihood ratio, consistency versus validity or accuracy, incidence versus prevalence, number needed to treat versus number needed to harm, absolute risk versus relative risk. Today, it's time to focus on the absolute risk increase, otherwise known as the attributable risk with many practice problems and solutions click the like button click the subscribe button and let's get started this is my statistics playlist please watch these videos in order to improve the probability of understanding there is another playlist titled biostatistics please watch the previous videos named absolute risk reduction and number needed to treat before you watch this video in 2015 a panel of the world health organization announced that 50 gram of processed meat per day increases risk of colorectal cancer by 18%. And of course, because rule number one in the news media is what bleeds leads, many of these doofus journalists confused absolute risk increase with relative risk increase. They are not the same. Moreover, you know what group one carcinogen even means? It means we are confident that this is a carcinogen. But this tells you nothing whatsoever about the magnitude of that risk. Processed meat is not as risky as cigarette smoking. Get your head out of your sphincter. They are not even close. And no, sitting is not the new smoking. Stop it. Get some help. For if this 18% increase were an increase in absolute terms, you should be very concerned. But in relative terms, not so much. Let me explain. Suppose that we have 100 individuals. Everyone is different, unique, and amazing. Just kidding, they're all NPCs. They have a social proof tendency, i.e. monkey say, monkey do. Out of each 100 normies that never eat processed meat, 6 out of 100 got colorectal cancer. But out of 100 normies that regularly eat processed meat, seven developed colorectal cancer. Note that if you multiply the six out of a hundred, these are the people who never eat processed meat, by 18%, you get one in a hundred. And this is the one extra person who developed colorectal cancer that can be attributed to processed meat. Add this one extra person per hundred to the six per hundred and you get seven per hundred. Now, can we calculate the attributable risk, i.e. the absolute risk increase? Sure. This equals the event rate in the exposed group. Exposed to what? Exposed to processed meat. Minus the event rate in the control group, which did not consume processed meat. In biostatistics, you always want to start with the big number and then minus and then the small number. You subtract the small one from the big one in order to get a positive result so that you do not lose your mind in the process. I don't want you to lose your mind and your colon. So let's calculate the attributable risk or the absolute risk increase. It equals the event rate in the exposed group, which is 7 in 100 minus the event rate in the control group, which is 6 in 100. 7 minus 6 is 1, and we have a common denominator, which is 100. This gives me a result of 1%. This is the absolute risk increase caused by eating processed meat, i.e. it's the risk of colorectal cancer that is attributable to the consumption of processed meat. And that's how we go from 6 in 100 to 7 out of 100. If you wish to see more videos like this in the future, drop your favorite food emoji in the comments. And whereas 18% is the relative risk, the absolute risk is only 1%. So with absolute risk difference, we can have absolute risk increase if you're being exposed to a bad thing such as processed meat, cigarette smoking, asbestos, lead poisoning, arsenic poisoning, etc. Or it could be absolute risk reduction, such as applying the seat belt before driving your car, locking your front door, having a door in the first place. I know that if you are a Zoomer, you cannot afford a house because your boomer parents made everything difficult or almost everything. Or vaccinations or prophylactic therapy or regular maintenance for your car. 
All of these things are supposed to make you safer, i.e. reduce your risk, at least on paper. And we call this absolute risk reduction rather than absolute risk increase. We talked about absolute risk reduction in a previous video. Today, we'll focus on absolute risk increase, otherwise known as attributable risk. You're being manipulated every single day by the news media, which doesn't care about you, and by drug companies, which do not give a rip about you. For the news media, what bleeds leads, so they will focus on the bigger numbers because they are more scary, and they will ignore the smaller numbers. Similarly, if a drug company invented or discovered a new drug that should lower your risk of blood clots, they will focus on the bigger number. Our new drug reduces the risk of clots by 18%. And they will not mention the 1% absolute risk reduction. Or they might mention it in the footnotes, written in a tiny, tiny font that cannot be read by the naked eye. But if a company is trying to argue in a litigation case in front of the judge that their product did not contribute to the catastrophe, they will say to the judge, oh, our product only increases the risk by 1%, and they will label the 18% increase as misinformation and disinformation. And this is why you should trust nobody. For there are three types of lies. Lies, damned lies, and goddamn statistics. To stop being manipulated, ask for all the raw numbers before and after a certain intervention or a certain exposure, and ask for all the ratios, not just in relative terms, but in absolute terms as well. Please note that when we say the term reduction, we subtract, as in risk reduction. So when I say absolute risk reduction, I will subtract something from something else. When I say relative, it implies division. So I will have a numerator and a denominator. When I say rate, it implies division as well. And if I'm talking physics, it implies division by time. So speed is the rate of change in distance. And velocity is the rate of change in displacement. And acceleration is the rate of change Notice that I'm dividing by time of velocity. See my physics playlist to learn more. When I say absolute risk reduction, it's reduction. So we subtract, start with the big number and then subtract the smaller number from the big number. So this is something that is supposed to make me safer, i.e. reduce the risk, which means the risk is lower after I'm exposed to this something rather than before I consume it. For example, prophylactic therapy or vaccination or seat belt installment. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionatus.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. But if I'm trying to calculate the absolute risk increase, I'm also subtracting. However, the exposed ones will be the bigger numbers than the control group because the risk is increasing, which means the risk after I'm exposed will be greater than the risk before I got exposed, which is the opposite of absolute risk reduction. And this is how to calculate the attributable risk or the absolute risk increase for the regular consumption of processed meat, pause and review. This is the event rate in the exposed group, i.e. those exposed to regular consumption of processed meat, minus the event rate in the control group, those that did not regularly consume processed meat. How do we calculate the event rate in the control group? It's the number of events in the control group divided by the total number of people in the control group. Similarly, the event rate in the treatment group is the number of events in the treatment group divided by the total number of subjects in the treatment group. How to calculate the absolute risk increase, also known as the attributable risk? Easy, start with the bigger number, which is the absolute risk in the exposed group, or the event rate in the exposed group, minus the absolute risk in the unexposed group, meaning the event rate in the control group. And if you flip this attributable risk or invert it, find the multiplicative inverse of the attributable risk, you will get the number needed to harm. So when I get exposed to a good thing, my risk is going to be reduced. We call this absolute risk reduction. And in this case, the event rate in the control group will be greater than the exposed group. But with exposure to something bad, it's the opposite. The event rate in the exposed group is greater than the event rate in the control group. If you flip the absolute risk reduction, you get number needed to treat because this is a good thing. But if you flip the attributable risk or the absolute risk increase, you're going to get the number needed to harm because this is a bad thing. 
Now let's practice what we preach. Please pause the video and try to solve this problem. Now pause. Okay, attributable risk or absolute risk increase. Start with the bigger number minus the smaller number. What's the bigger number? It's the 6%. And what's the smaller number? It is the 1%. You can write this in a different manner, like this. 6% means 6 in 100, and this is the event rate. The number of events, i.e. the number of mesotheliomas, per 100 individuals exposed to asbestos, minus the number of mesotheliomas per 100 persons not exposed to asbestos. This is the event rate in the exposed group, and this is the event rate in the control group or the unexposed group. And this, of course, will give me 5%, which is the same as 5 in 100, which is the same as 0 0.05. So the correct answer here is choice B, as in biostatistics. Here is another question for you. Now pause. How can we solve this? There is a method to solve it without a table and another method to use a table. Let's do it without table. Attributable risk equals bigger number minus the smaller number or the bigger event rate minus the smaller event rate. The bigger event rate is always going to be to those exposed to the risk factor. The smaller event rate will be in those who are not exposed to the risk factor. How many people did smoke cigarettes? The answer is 3,000, put this in the denominator. And how many people did not smoke cigarettes? The answer is 2,800. Out of the 3,000 persons in the first group, how many developed cancer? The answer is 300, put this in the numerator. And out of the 2,800 people in the second group, which did not smoke, how many developed bladder cancer? The answer is 28. There you go. And then cancel 0, 0 with 0, 0. 3 over 30 is like 1 in 10. Minus 28 over 2800 is 1 in 100. 1 over 10 is 0 0.10 minus 1 in 100, which is 0 0.01. So this gives me 0 0.10 minus 1 is 9, like this. This is the same as 9%, and this is the attributable risk, i.e. the risk of bladder cancer attributable to smoking. The next question, calculate the event rate in the control group. The control group is those who did not smoke, and the event rate in the control group is the second number, the smaller ratio, which is 1 in 100, which is the same as 1%. There you go. So this is the answer to the first question, and this is the answer to the second question. Now, can we use the table to calculate the attributable risk? Absolutely. We need to create a 2 by 2 table like this. And then what are we going to do? Let me just make my table squeaky clean. Okay. And then what? We always go like this. Disease, no disease. Exposed to smoking, not exposed to smoking. And this will be total. What's the total number of people that did smoke? The answer is 3,000, so you put 3,000 here. And how many people were not exposed to smoking? The answer is 2,800, you put that here. Out of the 3,000, how many developed bladder cancer? The answer is 300, put 300 here. And out of the 2,800 people that did not smoke, how many developed cancer? The answer is 28. How do you find these numbers? 3,000 minus 300 will give you this. And 2800 minus 28 will give you this. 3000 minus 300 equals 2700 or 2700. These are the people that did smoke but did not develop cancer. They did smoke but they did not develop cancer. 2800 minus 28 is 2772. These are the people that did not develop bladder cancer and they did not smoke. And then you need to label these four cells. You go like this, A, then B, then C, then D. Please do not go A, B, C, D. That's a big mistake. A has to be here, B has to be here, C has to be here, D has to be there. And then to find the attributable risk, this is what you do. You go A divided by A plus B minus C divided by C plus D. What is A? A is 300. You put this here, just like here. Divide by A plus B. A plus B is 3000. Put this in the denominator, like this. Minus C, which is 28. Put it here. 
and divide that by c plus d, which is 2800, put that here, which will give you the same numbers and the same result. Here are the same answers in color. Pause and review. Without a table, with a table. This one is your homework. How many persons need to regularly smoke cigarettes in order for one of them to develop bladder cancer? And I use the same numbers as the previous problem. Let me know your answer in the comments. You will find the answer key in the next video, which will be titled number needed to harm. Here is absolute risk increase again, otherwise known as attributable risk. Pause and review. Take a look at the other videos in my statistics and biostatistics playlists. If you value what I do, help me make more videos by supporting the channel, go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 750 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, math and physics make perfect sense.